Thank you, Mr. Ho. Next, let's welcome the head of polyester department, Zhao Chen of CCFEI, to give us a speech. Good afternoon, I'm Zhao Chen of CCFEI. Thank you very much this evening for your invitation. And I, for this chance, I have the honor to share with you all the aspects of the polyester market in China today. What we call the polyester industrial chain generally refers to the processing of naphtha from oil to generate aromatics like PX, olefin like acetylene, and the PTA. And if we speak it in details, the longer one would be the polyester filament, and the shorter one will be the polyester stable fiber. And the granular one will be the polyester bottle flakes. Currently, the whole industrial chain is now very highly concentrated, and the degrees of standardization of products is also very high. The degree of industrial chain integration in the past two years is in the rapid increase. The domestic industrial chain currently accounts for a high proportion of private enterprises. From the perspective of end use, we, the clothes we wear, the water bottles we use to drink water, and, and the home textiles we use, and the soft furniture bedding and travel car tire curtain clothes and Oxford clothes luggage extra are all polyester products. In 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, protective clothing, the PPE equipments and the goggles, masks all have polyester components. It can be said that every aspect of our life are closely related to the polyester. Above all, we may have a general concept of the polyester industrial chain, and then next, I will divide this section into introduce the current fundamental status and the characteristics of the industrial chain. First of all, let's look at the PX and the PTA, the two polyester raw material products, because there are certain uh, correlation between these two products. First of all, from the distribution of the installations, they are all concentrated in China's coastal areas like Zhejiang, Liaoning, Fujian. And they are the main PX and PTA production provinces. PX device is built mainly considering the convenience of transport in coastal areas. And the PTA is in mainly located in the downstream. In terms of the capacity distribution before 2019, the PX producers are mainly concentrated in the old state-owned three barrels of oil. That's what we call the Sinopec CMPC and the COC. And uh, these three companies account for 54% at the end of 2019 and 2019. After the private refineries are put into Operation. The capacity of these three companies accounted for 38 percent. And after 2022, the three companies will start some expansion plans and a proportion may be returned to 41 percent. As for PDA, China is currently the world's largest producer, and more than 60 percent of the world's PDA production capacity is based in China. The country just top 10 PDA producers in addition to the Sinopec. And the Sinopec is to the total capacity are, are all private, except the Sinopec are all private and foreign enterprises. At top of five are supporting the upstream and downstream devices of large production enterprises. So in terms of concentration, polyester from the top to bottom of the 
industrial chain are the current CR5 concentration of PRXPX is more than 60% and the PTA is nearly 70% polyester nearly 50% in all China's listed commodity features a single point product is a second only iron ore and from from the perspective of the industrial chain is currently the highest concentrated industry. We have just mentioned the, the successive expansion of the private enterprises in the after 2019 and so next the PX and the PTA will be in the expansion cycle. Actually during the period from 2012 to 20 2017, there are se se several accidents happened due to negative views on the media. The public demonized the PX and uh, how many misunderstandings about it. Thinks it is highly toxic and protecting, uh, protesting against the construction of new capacity. In fact, it is similar to gasoline, not as toxic as we thought. So new projects for PX were basically halted during that time period. And until the beginning of 2019, the production of large refining units to allow PX re-enter the state of capacity development. Corresponding to the table we show in the PPT, we can also see that 19 to 20 years is a period of PX acceleration in its capacity. And from 2021 to from 2021 to 2022, there are nearly 19 million tons of refining exporting capacity waiting to be released. In terms of PTA capacity expansion cycle is mainly from 2011 to 2014 and from 2019 onwards. The former supporting 2008 years of economic crisis after the issuance of 4 billion RMB, the polyester expansion led to the PTA supporting follow up. The latter is a private or funding expansion after the supporting digestion capacity. For, the, for this year, after the period we have just mentioned, there are still 30 million new capacity waiting to be released. So there are still a lot supply pressure. Next. From the perspective of demand in the Chinese ma market, as I just mentioned, the expansion of PDA capacity is bound to make the overall PDA in a tighter supply. So the PDA itself in 2019-2012 to complete a switch from net importer to the next exporter transition. The current supply can Tradition of domestic PTA in 2020 is very severe and the production cycle began to perform prominently. From the perspective of global market, from 2012 to 2018, there is still a certain gap in the global scope. But for PTA, it is similar to the situation in the domestic market, and it is still in oversupply. So, actually, there is a window period of new installations for them to put into operation, as mentioned earlier. And the domestic social inventory of PX is mainly accumulated from the expansion in 2020. In terms of PDA, from the 2017 to the first half of 2019, the inventory pressure is very small, and the pressure of setting up warehouses is actually pushing up significantly in 2020, with the arrival of new round of expansion cycle. From the perspective of import and export, as for the domestic market, currently the PX is still not really self-sufficient because the PX importing dependence is still maintained at a very high level. Before 2019, it is more than 55%, and after that, it declined to 45% in 2020. The import structure is also gradually changing in the past two years. Actually, we imported from Japan, Taiwan, 
and the device is really old, but and the cost competitive advantage is not very good. So in the past two years, the start start rate is also shrinking, and our corresponding imports are also declining. After the spur of markets outside of China to move to the Southeast Asia, the Middle East, actually the, the imports are also rising. As for the PTA, it has mentioned that after the 2012, China has turned changed the market structure of PTA import and export, and after 2019, the import dependence dependence of PTA has dropped to less than two percent, which is basically the annual demand is coming material processing just for our demand. As for the corresponding export market in the it is actually in continuous broadening, but in an expert perspective, anti-dumping pressure as well as the window period from 2017 to 2019, our industry is in a tight balance. Actually, we have that slowed the pace of exportation, but uh, now China's PDA exports will focus on some long-term strategy plans like the Belt and Road Initiative and RCEP contracts countries will be the future direction of China's export. Finally, let's talk about the PDA costs and PX costs. For PX, the process of the plan is in the past year has changed a lot because of the technology innovation. So the profit has also had a radical change compared with previous years. In the past, we used to define the PX and the NAP spread at $250 and the PX to MAMX spread at $180 or So actually, we can see the the window of the processing is actually shrinking, and uh, the order of priority of PX cost advantages and the different processes is actually the refining. And chemical integration is higher than the exogenous condensants, and it is also higher than exogenous NAPSA, and the last one is exogenous MX. At present, more than 60% of the capacity in China's mainland market has adopted the integrated refining and chemical processes and the situation in South Korea is relatively in the middle although Japan also has 60% of integrated production units but its unit process is relatively old some small individual capacity have lowered their processing cost in the case of startup pressure compared with China So the reshuffling of the process technologies will also accelerate the global market capacity clearing. For PTA, first of all, actually there is a concept that the source of many industry chains are crude oil because we can see from the name that it is has a high correlation with the price of crude oil. So I can say that see from the chart in the right side of my PPT that in the past two years the spot price of PTA has a very high correlation with the crude oil and the correlation is more than 0 0.75 as we can see the concept of PTA is very clear after the significant expansion of the PDA industry since 2013. The PDA market also derived from the PX and the PDA link lock order trading model. So the processing margin in the PDA industry is also a key indicator of to measure price volatility. When the supply pressure of PDA is relatively 
high or in a year when the supply pressure is relatively low actually we can also reference to the PTA processing fee and to adopt a, a appropriate trading way similarly due to the high concentration degree of the PTA industry the regulation of PTA production operation will often match the change of PDA processing phase. Now let's see what I can find from the PX and the PTA markets. More than 60% of global polyester capacity is currently located in China, while most of the polyester capacity is in the Chinese market, and most of the polymer capacity outside of China is dominated by polyester bottles. By the end of 20 2020, China's polyester nominal production capacity is about 67.11 million tons, of which more than half is directly spun polyester filament. Another 70% 70% of polyester bottles and 13% is polyester staple fiber and a part of pure polyester chips, polyester film, and industrial yarn. The development of China's polymerization capacity can basically be divided into four stages. The first stage is from 2000 to 2003, basically direct spinning device to gradually phase out intermittent spinning device. Then from 2003 to 13 years is the second phase. That we witness the rapid development of China's polymerization from 200,000 tons to 300,000 tons of and then the third phase is from 2013 to 2017, especially after the issuance of four trillion dollars, four trillion yuan in 2008. Due to the second phase of development is too rapid, coupled with the cyclical nature of the industry, polyester cash flow decline. So this phase is a reshuffle phase, and in the second half of 20. 16, the industry once again back to the bottom cycle. The last phase, the fourth phase, is from 2017 to 2018 after the elevation of the error capacity and the industry restarted its growth and the production capacity started expanding. And again, especially from 2016 to the first half of 2018. Actually, the industry boom was also affected in the second half of the 2018 due to the outbreak of the trade war between China and the U.S. Then in 2020, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. All right. The demand to the polyester industry also hit heavily because of the market fluctuation. That's the situation about the polyester market. From these charts, we can also see that after 2016, polyester products are basically high in its capacity utilization high profits, low inventory, that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 also reflects the characteristic of low profits and high inventory. From the perspective of demand outlook, the growth of polyester filament demand in a post-epidemic era mainly depends on the cyclical recovery of closing and concerns about the follow-up progress of the China us trade war after Biden's administration going to the office. The long-term productive structure is also broadening. Currently, the market is uh, researching on the cotton routine. We know that that the polyester stable fiber futures is launched in the last year. So, combined with PTA and other futures, 
actually the financial features of the market is increasing so we are getting more and more attention from the market since we're talking about the market outlook we also want to see the current status of the highly integrated industry chain and from this we can also see what will happen in the future first of all you can see in the 2020 due to the pandemic actually the packaging we are using are all the new demand for the polyester industry because we are in great we can see from the current situation there is increasing demand from the market first of all we can see after the industrial chain gradually enters a degree of high integration but the profit distribution of the whole industrial chain is more beneficial than detrimental from this chart we can see the industrial chain profit distribution that after 2016 the industrial chain profit distribution is relatively uniform then gradually into the whole ship structure and in 2019 even after the occurrence of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 we can see that overall profitability of the polyester industry is actually stable and increasing gradually and also the integration of the whole industry is also still in a good situation from 2021 to 2022 in China the PX and the PTA capacity is still in an uh, expansion cycle and the raw material end of the unit will still in surplus initial contraction will be in the PTA end while then may go to squeeze the PX export independence so this is a visionary situation of the profit as well as the supply and the demand structure and the current trading pattern of different varieties in the market has gradually tended to diversify traditionally PTA futures out two trading models one is financial and the other is a physical and also people want to try to trade both PX PTA or PX and NAPSA futures especially for some big factors they are going to trade PX and the NAPSA together we know that PX is listed in SGX and we can see the PX prices and the market demands fluctuation from there so the spot trading pattern has changed due to the futures market improvement and uh, there are more and more trading modes emerge we can also say there are trading modes combining both futures trading and spot trading either buy at low selling at a high or buy at a high selling at a low are all common in the markets after the polyester stable fiber are launched in the DC last year even the factories and other participants in the industry chain are all willing to participate in the futures market and the hedging and arbitrage between different products 
such as Pilaster Stable Fiber Futures and the PDA Futures are also welcomed and gradually accepted by the market. For the aromatic industry, for example, if the profit is low, actually they can lock profits in other products related. So the trading modes is becoming more and more diversified. Since the year before last year, the options are launched. More and more trading strategies are developed and so people are, are getting more and more ways to secure their profits. Actually, in the past few years, people tend to lock their profits, especially for those polyester filament industries. And also, some financial companies like futures company and uh, private funds, they also want to participate in the market to explore some trading opportunities. So I think in the future, more and more adoption of the financial tools will help the market participants to hedge their risks. So let me give you a summary. Actually, the first is that the impact of the pandemic on the industry chain will lessen the cycle of, of the garment industry from a longer term perspective. So the impact on our industry is definitely not as in a short term way. But the process of a gradual transmission as long as is maybe as long as one year or even two or three years. So the industry may be going into a reshuffling period. The overall inventory of PX is still under relatively high pressure, although the expansion of the production in 2021 will be limited. There will still be more capacity waiting to be launched since 2022 window period, and the processing phase are expected to remain in a neutral and weak state. And also, it may be infected by the crude oil prices. For all the polyester products, the structural characteristics are obvious, and they will still be in a pattern of steady development for a long cycle. We thank ZC very much for their increasing supply of the financial tools and for us to develop more and more trading modes. So the transaction mode of the polyester industry chain will become more diversified and the application of financial instrument will run through the transaction along the industry chain for a long time. That's all of my speech. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can contact me and this is my telephone number and the email address. Thank you very much. Thank you.